What up folks, Alex here. Now Blackmagic have recently released DaVinci Resolve number 16 into public beta. Now, quick word of warning, public beta means it's available for you all to download, there's a link in the description below, but it's still in beta, which means there could be bugs, so just be aware of that. Now this new version of DaVinci Resolve comes with a whole range of new features, and the one in particular I wanted to look at today is the new cut panel. The cut panel is essentially a simplified version of the edit panel and it's there to allow you to chop together videos really quickly and efficiently. If you're a YouTuber like I am or you make vlogs and that sort of thing then I think you're really going to like this panel. It may save you a whole lot of time just by making things a little bit simpler and a little bit easier to do in DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm no expert on this, it only came out recently, I actually only downloaded it earlier today but I just wanted to go through some of the things I've found as well as giving you a little bit of help to get you started using the new cut panel in DaVinci Resolve 16. So let's boot it up and have a look shall we? Now the first thing you need to know is how to get to the cut page and it's nice and obvious. Along the toolbar at the bottom you've now got cut in between media and edit. So give cut a click. And this is the screen you'll see. Now I'm going to give you a real quick overview before we actually drill down into some of the cool new features. On the top left you've got MIDI pool, transitions, titles and effects. So you've got this little menu bar at the top. This here on the left is your media pool. So it's very similar to what you'd get in the usual media pool or within the edit screen. Over on the right we've got our preview window along with our preview controls and at the bottom we've got our timeline or should I say timelines. You'll notice that there's two timelines and that's actually one of the significant features which we're going to have a look at in a moment. You can drag and drop things into here, the same as you usually would, or you can click on this icon here to import media, or you can right click and import media. Now that's pretty much the same as it was before, so nothing new there, except for this icon here. This allows you to import media folders. So I'm going to click on this icon, I'm going to browse to a folder which I've got set up, and I'm going to click select folder. And that's going to add the folder itself. Now what that means is I can drill down, there's everything within that folder, so we've got images, audio and video, and it's also kept the folder structure. So within that folder itself is another folder called Latest, and everything's within there, and within there I've got another folder called Former, and everything is within there. So you can set up that folder structure within Windows, and it will be maintained as soon as you import it into DaVinci Resolve. I really like that, I think that's going to be super useful. And then once you've added your media to your media pool, you can double click to open up the preview window. Now this is very similar to what we had before. Preview window here and our preview controls underneath. But what's new is this audio timeline underneath. Now this is really handy in itself because you can see here at a moment of madness, probably forgot what I was doing and I was silent. And this is the extra section I want so I can just skip straight to it. Use my I and O keys to just mark the points I want in and out. Then I can add that section of the clip to my timeline. Now this is also where we get our first glimpse of the new dedicated trim tools. So let's say that I've added my ins and outs here, but I need to make them a little more precise. If I click on this icon, it'll open this window. So now I've got two preview screens. I've got one on the left and one on the right. The preview window on the left is the exact point where I come in, and the preview window on the right is the exact moment where I come out. Now you can see there's also another timeline over here with negative numbers on the left and positive numbers on the right. This is all here to give you much more control over your trim points. So if I just click on this trim point here, and let's say I need to make some really fine adjustments, I can just click and I can drag, and at all times I can see the exact point where it's going to be coming in. Now the numbers will also change, so at the minute we're on zero, if I drag to the left, I've gone back 17 frames. So you've got much more control over your trim points. If I let go, that'll reset to zero. And then again, if I use my out trim point, I can just do the exact same thing. Now you'll also notice the timeline zooms in so you can see the audio points as well. So if I know this is the point where I finished talking, I can just trim out right after, say about there, and that's perfect. And then I can just hit this icon here to insert it to my timeline. So that was perfectly easy. We added some media to our media pool, we knew the clip we wanted and we knew specifically the section we wanted to add, so we added it. However, sometimes if you're anything like me, you're lazy, you don't rename everything correctly, you just leave it as the default, so I've got C22, 23, 24 here, you can't remember what's in each of the clips. 
Now you could open them all up individually and have a look at them, but now in DaVinci Resolve 16, there's an easier way. Just above your preview window, there's three icons here. We have source clip, source tape, and timeline. Now the one we want to have a quick look at is source tape. You're going to see the same preview window here with our playhead and with our trim tools. But what this actually is, this is every single video within the media pool added as one big timeline. So you can see these small white markers here. They indicate the jumps between the different clips. So if I just scroll back, this is one clip and then it jumps to the other and then another and another and it's just put them all all together. So you can move your playhead and have a look at the different sections. Now you can also, if I leave my playhead there and I go back to my media pool, you can see that one is highlighted in red. So this section we're looking at here is for that file there. And this one here is from 22, this from here is 26. And then you can do the same thing as before. So I can just go through all my files, do my ins and outs, and I can add that section to the timeline. And then we'll go here and say I want in there and then out there, and I'll add that section to my timeline. And you can just go through all of your clips in one big go, adding all the different sections that you want. So now that we've added some clips to our timeline, let's actually talk about this new twin timeline. So there's a timeline at the top and a timeline at the bottom. Now the top one is a zoomed out version of the timeline. So you can always see the very beginning and the very end of your project. If I was to add another video to the project, you can see it will just automatically zoom out so I can still see the far right, i.e. the end, and the far left, the beginning of my project. Now in terms of navigating this top timeline, you click and drag the playhead from left to right in exactly the same way you usually would on the edit page. Now the bottom timeline is a little bit different. You can't move this playhead, it stays right in the center at all times. But as you can see, as I move the playhead across here, you can actually see the project moving left to right. So you can see the exact point where you are. And it's frame by frame. So if I drag this one really slow, I can just move frame by frame and I can see the exact point where I am. Now I can also, if I hover my mouse over this timeline here, you can see my cursor changes. So I can click and I can drag left to move my playhead right, and I can move right to move my playhead left. It gives you much more granular control over where you are within your project. Now both of these timelines are completely functional. So if I click on this section here, you can see it's also highlighted in the top timeline. I can click in this bottom timeline to highlight it and then just drag it to the left and it will swap between the two. So not only have you got much more granular control, it's also far easier and far quicker because you don't have to keep zooming in and out. Now if that control still isn't enough, you can also access the dedicated trim tool for even more granular control. So let's say this point here where this clip meets this clip, we're not quite happy with the exact point where it occurs. So we need to make a slight change to it. Now we can either click on this timeline or this timeline. If I hover my mouse over that join, you'll see the cursor will change. If I then click, it opens this screen here. The left preview is the left or the first clip, and then the right hand preview screen is the right or second clip. Now this is the point where they join and we can amend this as we need to. So if I click on this trim tool in the middle, and then I can drag to the left, or I can drag to the right. And if you look at my timeline at the bottom, you can see where that point is changing. So making the first clip shorter, or making the second clip longer. Now let's say that we're completely happy with the second clip, this is the exact point where I want that, that video to come in, but we're not happy with this one. We need to move this one independently, of the second. So instead of clicking in the middle of the tool here, we're going to click on the top. I'm just going to drag to my left to make it shorter, and I can drag it to my right to make that clip longer. And again, you can just keep your eye on the preview window as you do it, and you've also got those count of frames, so you know exactly how many frames you're adding or subtracting. If you need to do the exact same thing to the second clip, i.e. make it longer or shorter without actually affecting the first clip, we can use the bottom half of the trim tool we can drag left and we can drag right. Once you're done, click anywhere to come out of there and go back to the normal timeline view. We've got our files on our timeline, we know what we're doing with our timeline and we've made some cuts. But at the moment these are hard cuts. 
Now, we could just go to transitions, and we can add the transitions in the same way they usually would. But the most common transitions these days are dissolve cuts and smooth cuts. So they've made it much easier for you to add them. Down here, there's two icons. This one here is a smooth cut, and this one here is a dissolve. So rather than having to navigate through the menus, you can just click on this to add the dissolve transition to the project. Now they've also made it so it's a little bit smarter. Rather than having to put the cursor directly on the cut there, if I'm roughly in the right place, so let's just say there, and I click on dissolve, it will just add it to that cut. If I move my playhead over here, and this time I'm just going to click on smooth cut, it will just add it to the right spot. I can then extend it or shorten it however I need to. For all the other transitions, you just need to go to transitions, find it, and then drag and drop. If you're looking for the inspector, which is usually over on the right hand side, it contains all your things like composites, transforms, cropping, that sort of thing. It's hidden here. It's this icon here underneath the preview window. If you give that a click to open the tools, and then we've got transform, crop, volume, speed, camera, dynamic zoom, and composite. And they work in pretty much the same way as they did before. They just look slightly different. And the last thing to show you is the quick export up in the top right hand corner. So if we give that a click, this window will appear and we can do a quick export in H.264, YouTube or Vimeo. Now, if I click on Vimeo, you'll see it'll say sign in to publish directly to Vimeo and you have to manage your account. The same will happen for you first time you try and use YouTube. So to manage this, click on manage account, click on system and then go to internet accounts and you'll be able to sign into your YouTube and your Vimeo. And when you export your video, you were prompted for your location to save it on your local machine. And it will also, if you tick this box, upload directly to YouTube. You can change the privacy from default, private, public, or unlisted. I would definitely recommend either going with private or unlisted because you won't be able to set a description or tags or anything directly from in here. So if you put it as private or unlisted, go type your description, put your tags, do all your usual things, and then you can make it public directly on YouTube. But that's really handy. The downside to this, for some crazy reason, the YouTube default has an unlimited bitrate. So you end up with quite big video files. To get around this in the past, what I did was create my own personal output. So if I just cancel this, I'm going to go to deliver, and I've got something called Alex YouTube, which is set as MP4, H.264, and it's restricted to 10,000 kilobytes per second. Now you can actually add any custom render settings to the quick export. So if you click on the little ellipse here, and then you've got quick export, and I have my custom one, which is Alex YouTube, so I'm going to click that. And then what I'll actually do is put a tick there. And then if I go back to cut and then quick export, I now have four options at the top. One of them being Alex YouTube with all my custom settings and then I can export that. And it's a quick way to export or render the project. Now, unfortunately with a custom one, you cannot get it to automatically upload to YouTube, which is a shame, but it's still a bit of a time saver. Also, don't forget, the cut panel doesn't contain all the same features as the rest of DaVinci Resolve, but there's nothing stopping you from any point hopping into Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight, or Deliver, and making those additional changes, and then just hopping back to the cut panel to finish the project. And that's it. I hope that was useful. Do remember, I'm relatively new to this panel myself. I only got it today, so there's probably some features I missed and some of the things which will come out of the woodwork but hopefully it's given you enough of an overview to download it and be confident enough to go have a play. If it was useful, thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, pop a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.